Got a quick question from a viewer. Thank you for clarifying a lot of things on the King James Only issue. I moved away from that position a while ago, but most of my family is still in the KJV Only mindset. How would you answer them when they bring up the watering down of the gospel by removing titles like Son of God, or removing blood, or replacing words like whosoever with whoever? And here's one my dad pointed out. In the ESV, in Leviticus 16, the ESV translators put in Azazel instead of leaving in scapegoat. How would that make the reading or interpretation easier? These are all excellent questions. Let's try for some super quick, if I can, answers. First, you must always keep text and translation distinct in your mind so that you can resolutely refuse to talk about issues of text unless you and the person you're talking with can read Greek. When they say that the modern translations remove son of God and blood, that's an issue of text, not translation. The ESV and NIV and New American Standard are translating from the critical Greek New Testament text in, in which these words are occasionally not present. The King James Version and New King James Version and Modern English Version are translating from a slightly different version of the Greek New Testament called the Textus Receptus. The King James Version and New King James and Modern English Version are translating from a version of the Textus Receptus in which these words are present. I believe it's unfruitful to argue about New Testament textual criticism with people who cannot read Greek. My King James only brothers often take this as an insult, but I insist it's not. It's born of simple, repeated observation. I know this subject well. I've looked at countless Greek and Hebrew manuscripts, and I personally have never had a fruitful debate over this topic with anyone who can't read Hebrew or Greek. We get mired in confusion so quickly. I often have to tell my King James only brothers what their own position is supposed to be. I've never once encountered a King James only layperson who accurately represented what the best thought leaders in their own world have said. Lay people and churches that confess faith in the Textus Receptus still almost always, in my experience, take a confused but still basically Ruckmanite view of the King James, and nearly none of them is aware that the New King James and Modern English Version translate from the same text. So every time your relatives bring up the superiority of the Hebrew and Greek texts underlying the King James, repeat the same refrain to them, dad, brother, sister, whatever. The New King James Version and the Modern English Version both use the same underlying Hebrew and Greek texts as the King James, and they translate those texts into fully intelligible contemporary English, which means that they meet the principle of 1 Corinthians 14, edification requires intelligibility. I recommend the New King James and the Modern English Version to you. We can agree to disagree about textual criticism. We shouldn't agree to disagree about the importance of using words people can understand whenever possible, like broom instead of besom. In other words, be concrete. Put the emphasis where the Bible does, on using understandable words. Don't put the emphasis on something the Bible doesn't address, namely how to discover which variants are correct when manuscripts of the Greek New Testament or the Hebrew Bible differ a little here and there. When it comes to whosoever versus whoever, look it up. There's no difference in meaning, and even if there were, it's unlikely that contemporary English speakers would know that difference in meaning. When we hear whosoever, we hear a more formal version of whoever, and I think that we're right to hear it this way. I looked at the Greek in John 3.16, and there's nothing in the Greek that whosoever brings out that whoever doesn't. I could be missing something. The fact is that I'm the top red-headed reader of Elizabethan English on my block, and I can read New Testament Greek, and I can't figure out what they're getting after here. As for Azazel and Sheol and Abaddon and a few other Hebrew words that modern translations sometimes translate into English and sometimes transliterate, do some Bible study. Check the net Bible notes at bible.org. Honor your father, always honor your father, by answering his question. I didn't even have to check the net Bible to know that they had a note on Azazel, but I did check and they do have a note. And you won't get a briefer and more concise explanation from an evangelical perspective. Basically, Azazel is a very difficult word, and there are four leading views for what it means. Only if the King James translators were inspired is it possible that they made the right choice on all disputed or difficult translation questions. And the Bible nowhere tells us that any translation can be inspired or perfect. 
nor did the King James translators think that their work was perfect. Also, it's not as if the sole purpose of modern versions is to make the Bible easier to read. Their purpose is to translate the Bible into contemporary English. Sometimes that means disagreeing with the choices made by the King James translators, just as the King James translators disagreed with some of the choices made by the Bishop's Bible translators that they were revising. Sometimes, as with Azazel, it means making the text harder to read. But as I often say when this happens, it is never because the modern versions chose an archaic or obsolete English word. It's nearly always because the text is talking about a difficult or obscure thing which doesn't appear in our culture. A place, for example, which we don't know, like the Arabah. We don't have mandrakes. It's another common example I give. We don't have a concept in the Western world for Sheol or Abaddon or Gehenna. I think it's okay for some modern translations to transliterate these words and force people to look them up because the things to which they refer are obscure and require study. I think it's also okay for some modern translations to translate these words, Sheol and Abaddon in Proverbs 15:11, become death and destruction in the NIV, for example. But I'm always amused by this response from my King James only brothers. Well, the modern versions contain difficult words too. I always think to myself, oh, okay, you want to play my game? Do you want to count up the dead words and false friends that occur in the King James Version versus the difficult words in the modern versions? Now this is not, or this would not be, comparing apples to apples. Remember, archaic words are not the same linguistic category as words naming obscure things. Words versus things, I say to people all the time. But I'm still willing to play, even in an uneven field like that. And I start the game by saying, I've counted at least 50 false friends that occur 1,362 times, but I never get any further than this in the game. As it turns out, they don't actually want to play the count the difficult words game. Finally, I would sing one refrain with your family. I just want to understand the Bible. Say it humbly, sing it humbly, but sing it. I just want to understand, and I struggle at times to understand the King James because of its archaic English. Also, people whom I evangelize or teach often struggle more than I do. I just want the Bible in my English. Paul said that edification requires intelligibility. I pray you'll have success with your family. Be humble, be loving, tell them the truth.